What are you trying to tell me? That I can dodge bullets? No, Neo. I'm trying to tell you that when you're ready, you won't have to. So we've expected for quite some time that the interest in Keanu Reeves' Berserker comic coming out from Boom Studios with Ron Garney on art, Matt Kent uh, writing, was going to be pretty high. We saw that they did a crowdfunding campaign. Did very well, I believe, the campaign, uh, which was essentially a pre-order for the you know first three volumes of the story, generated like $1.5 million on Kickstarter. Obviously, that was an enormous success, but I don't think that we could have anticipated exactly the kind of uh, money that it's generating right now in the direct market. The orders are in, and, and they're quite substantial, and here to talk with me about that is El Percherino himself, the Kapuba of comics. Perch, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Uh, nice to see a big success and big numbers for comics. Absolutely. I love talking about positive news, and I'm really excited about this. Now, there might be We'll, we'll talk about it. There might be some some caveats to this, but right now the pre-order is over 635,000 issues for or for copies for issue number one to the direct market. That is an enormous number. That's the biggest order for any single comic on record since 2015, which would have been Star Wars number one. Now, you might say Boom has never had a success quite like this. That's not exactly true. In 2016, they shipped... What was it? Um, big Trouble in Little China, Escape from New York. Obviously, those are uh, big, big 80s movie franchises. They did a collab, uh, crossover. Obviously, Kurt Russell was starting those. And they shipped over 400,000, I believe, on that, that comic book. No, no, it was over 500,000. But there was a caveat. A, a large portion, like 350 to 400,000 of those, were loot crate orders. Does that fall into this berserker order? Probably. I'm sure there are some coming from some other places, and I don't think that's a, a bad thing or a cheat of any kind. I, I mean, that's it, I've seen a lot of people in the comic industry talk about how that's that's not technically right, and it's cheating, and it's, it's, it's wrong in some weird way. Um, the goal is to get your comic out into the market any way you can, any place you can. You don't have to limit it to one spot, and I think the big sales we're seeing from Berserker is really about the fact that it... it it actually had proper marketing for once. It, it talked to, to normies. It talked to people who are not regular comic readers and, and said, here's something that you should pay attention to. I think that's great. Now, obviously, the, the Star Wars comic was also boosted. The sales were boosted by another loot crate order that I think was upwards of like half a million. So this is probably, you know, kind of in there, but the sales are substantial. I believe on the top 10 reorders, for uh, for April, eight of them are berserker. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean it's because it's it's done things right. It's taken a character people are you know is new but is intriguing. They Keanu Reeves is a hot property. People like like that. You put an artist that people recognize on it. Um, I think that there's a lot of elements here for why this book is is doing very well. But the biggest is that it's it's pushing to customers outside of comic shops. And it's saying, hey, here's something you want to pick up. It's it's good. You get kind of a, I, I don't know, if they're, they've been pushing a little bit of a John Wick feel. Or you're going to get a lot of action. Um, and that's that's going to attract that audience. And it's going to successfully pull them in. And it's it's the opposite of what the big two publishers, and frankly, a lot of indies has done as well, where they market to their base. And they're like, they go to their comic base and say, hey, how, would you like a, another comic? Maybe based on this thing over there. Um, what Boom did, whether intentional or not, and I do kind of worry this was accidental, they got outside of the current comic market, and that's why they're bringing everybody in, and it's 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 nice to see. Well, they are taking a few tricks from Marvel and DC, specifically Marvel. There are a lot of variant covers. There's a oh, lot sure. of incentive covers. I believe there's a 1 in 1,000 signed cover that you can get. So obviously, if you order 1,000 copies of Berserker, which be, would be very substantial. You're talking you know, your big, big shops like Graham's and... Uh, Mile high comics, stuff like that. So you know they are using the tricks, but if you're going to use those tricks, I, I think if you're a Boom Studios or an Image or our Dark Horse, you, I think you have to take the shot with with the comic that you feel comfortable that is going to you know transcend comics and maybe bring in a larger audience than you anticipated. It feels like it's absolutely worked, and uh, their gamble is playing off bigger than you know I could ever anticipate. I thought this was going to be a hot book. I did not think it was going to double the the orders for batman three jokers yeah 
It's crazy. Um, I, again, it's it's great to see. I, I think this is uh, it. it I, we we did suspect it was going to be big. Um, it makes sense that it is, but it is. Uh, it, it, I, it, all you're seeing here is just a reaction to they've managed to get outside of the typical comic audience or bringing new people in. Now, if Boom is smart here, they will aggressively market to this new audience the other things that they have. They will find ways to to talk to them. I, I think show them some of the other things they have. Probably now would be the time to start getting some other titles lined up that are you know thematically similar to what Berserker is. That's that's where they need to be going. They need to be going there very, very quickly. So I hope they are. Um, it looks like it's going to be a fun project. So interesting, uh, interestingly enough, Marvel tried something similar. Uh, was it 20, 2019, I think, when they announced J.J. Abrams' Spider-Man? Obviously, uh, C.B. Cebulski sent out the tweet, it's time to sell another million comic, or million issue comic. And now it seems like he kind of had the right idea, but I don't think he realized the drawing power of J.J. Abrams on a Spider-Man, J.J. Abrams on his son on a Spider-Man, versus Keanu Reeves on an original project. Do you see maybe Boom, Marvel, DC, maybe going out there and searching some bigger name celebrities not a, n normally associated with comic books and maybe doing some original projects, maybe some scripts or things that they've had in development that maybe it turns out aren't right for the big screen or the little screen. I think so. I mean, it, I think that'd be smart to do. I mean, the big difference between what they did and what Marvel did is that Marvel, um, they didn't ever talk to anyone outside of, of their current base. They didn't go out and say, J.J. Abrams is a comic. J.J. Abrams did did nothing really outside of uh, talking through the Marvel channel. Um, you know, Keanu Reeves was active in pushing this book. They, they, they were active in going and finding a new audience. So uh, this is this is the foolishness of, of the big two right now is that they look at this and go, um, you know, we're just we're gonna somehow going to sell a million copies to our existing base. It's like, you, I don't think you have a million customers out there right now. Um, just in total volume. So you have to go find new ones. So good, good for boom for doing that. And, and definitely I think they should look at some other scripts they have and some other things that, that may be in the mix. Also Marvel did somewhat of a, would you call it viral marketing when they, they announced that JJ Abrams project and they kind of pissed some people off because they were very coy about what they are doing, but it gave people an idea that maybe this was going to be the Spider-Man, this Ra Sam Raimi Spider-Man 4 script that they were going to retool, or maybe it was an existing script. Some people thought maybe from Stan Lee that they were going to have, uh, you know, maybe put some modern artists and, and beef it up or something like that. Obviously, it ended up being a kind of a disappointment. In this one, they came out right up front. They said, this is a Keanu Reeves story. He's developed it. We're going to bring in some artists, and I think people enjoy that. Now, another key element to the success in this has been that they launched the idea really on Kickstarter through crowdfunding and really generated a ton of interest. We, we've seen Image do similar things, obviously, with the director's cut of Scott Snyder and Tony Daniels' Nocturna Number 1. We've seen uh, Sean Gordon Murphy do it with his creator-owned projects. You know, do you see maybe Marvel and DC maybe following this boom strategy and doing like a pre-order for two or three volumes of, of something that they think is going to be big, maybe to just to get the interest out there? Because obviously... Uh, it does get some eyes on it that maybe aren't traditional comic readers. They're more like collectors and things like that. You know, I don't think so. I, I, I think Marvel in particular, it's, it's, they, they will struggle. They don't, they don't have the DNA of going to look at these other places. Now, I think if, if more people do it, then I think it becomes more likely that they'll follow suit. I think that that's, that's within the realm of possibility, but they don't seem interested in really leading in this area. And they, they, They've shunned any kind of uh, any kind of change to comic distribution in the comic market. They're very much in the camp of no things are the way they are, and they're going to always be that way, and we're going to leave it that way. Um, I don't know. Um, you, maybe I guess is is my answer to you. I, I think at, at some point you would think it would just be stupid not to, but you know, <laughs> there's a lot of bad. It interesting. Not that long ago, Marvel did their own kind of crowdfunding with this Chris Claremont, you know anniversary of the uh, i think it was yeah uh, days of futures past where he there was going to be original i think prequel story you, you got a big collection out of it they didn't go through kickstarter they didn't go through indiegogo they had like their own crowdfunding platform that no one had ever heard of and it really struggled to meet its order they ended up having to add, keep adding perks to it until it finally you know hit the number that it needed to for production yeah 
Yeah, I, I, they don't know how to work the, the system and they're not interested in talking to people who do. Um, and that's, that's it, it's, it's sad to see. I mean, it's just, they, there's just, I think there's very obvious solutions out there. There's things that are working for people and I think you can just pick it up and copy it. This uh, Berserker title by Boom is an example of how you do it. I think that you will see some other indies uh, follow suit. I just, I don't think they're going to be the big two. I don't think they're going to be image, but you know, I look forward to seeing some other people do it. This is absolutely going to catapult boom to, you know, in a race for the third biggest publisher this year. That's, that's pretty crazy to think about too. It is. They have been on a very rapid, uh, ascent up, up the numbers as far as comic book industry. I'm glad to see it. They've been putting out remarkable work. They picked up a couple of key licenses along the way. We shall see what happens with some of the other Hasbro stuff, but boom is on the rise. Keanu Reeves is a big name. We, we uh, assume that, but the, the orders are bigger than we could have imagined. We'll see if Loot Crate played a part in that, but those are paid orders, and I'm sure boom isn't going to apologize for that because they are making money, and we have some good news heading into 2021 regarding uh, the comic book industry and indie comics. It's been a big year, and it already was had been leading up to a big year. It's even bigger than we anticipate. Absolutely. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.